3.9% of young people are Christian. Is that what you just said? Yeah, so it's, what you say? that's between, I think it's between 18 and 25 by the ONS. That It used to be like 5.1, but it went down to 3.9%. It's miniature. Yeah. That's who, uh, who consider them, themselves Christian. Yeah, but they only classify that as wow. 18 to 25, I think. But below that, it's so minuscule. But what's interesting as well, what's happened in Christianity is people who are older... So like I think it's fifty or sixties plus are becoming more Christian, and people below who are younger are becoming less Christian because the older people look at the dismantling of society, and they obviously don't they didn't realise that was held up by faith, and then they see and then young people stay are so individualistic and useless that they don't they are the god of themselves, so then why they don't need anything above them because they they think they are god almost. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I think we're learning. I think everyone would agree with this on this podcast that so much of what we took for granted was Christian. It was a European take on Christianity and it was very specific. And really, we've now we're losing that and we see everything that goes with it. Yeah, we thought we sort of took a lot for granted. We thought things were sort of secular meritocracy and things like this, but it turns out it wasn't. My thing now is I've realized atheism, I've said this before, but atheism is just another sect of christianity in this it's another development from christianity because because you don't have atheists in most of the world and you know what it, it, atheists in this culture are really saying we, we we were taking on all the ethics of christianity and all the advantages we're just getting rid of the spiritual belief part but you're not getting people from other you, you know you've got the islamic world you've got people who are buddhist there but you don't get these atheists in the same way you might get people who are atheists but they, they don't see it as a sort of a ideology in the same way and i'm convinced now that's just come from a Christian. It's just a kind of last stage of a Christian culture or something. You, they still want to retain the ethics. Anyway, mm. I don't know. And Someone I've... can shoot me down on that who's done more work on it. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just saying. Yeah, Because I, I had an interesting conversation with a friend who he, he just dismissed the Bible, anything that was in there. And, you know, it's fine to not believe in, be a Christian or whatever, but it's if you actively dismiss the Bible or anything like that, I think there is a sense of arrogance because it's, you know, the most popular book of all time ever it is the most sold book every single year beyond any book sale ever. It's not even in the charts because it always is the best. Um, you know, the what is spoken about in the Bible has withstood time. It, not one thing Jesus did is not a, could not be taken as good today. So contextually, it's completely cement, you know, Ten Commandments, everything. So to just dismiss that, you, you do need some form of arrogance. It's a controversial thing to say, I think, but if you dismiss the Bible and Christianity, you, you're arrogant. There's no other way. Because even if you look at it from a view of, oh, isn't this bollocks? You know, Jesus walked on water. Yeah, sure he did and all this stuff. You look at the principles of Christianity where it comes to relationships, where it comes to living, like you can't deny that works. Like sex before marriage, for instance, makes people like couples have better, one better sexual satisfaction. It means divorce rates are lowered what it says about love, commitment, everything. It's even if you're not a Christian, there's people who aren't Christian who follow the rules of the Bible because they know it is a good moral way to live, even if they don't, they think everything else is nonsense. That's how powerful the Bible is.